is QTV News and I am Mumudu Gajaga. Thank you very much for joining us. We are live at our studios at Caraba Avenue. And now the main news headlines. The National Assembly ratified two loan agreements amounting to at least $1.8 billion for widening of the Battle Harden Highway. The EU Observer Mission to the Gambia on Tuesday presented its final report of the December 4th presidential election. The Q Group on Friday held its Staff Family Phone Day at Q City on Independence Day, bringing together staff of various Q Group companies and their families. Diplomacy, Etiquette and Protocol Consulting on Monday wrapped up a week-long training course for protocol officers from the ECOWAS Commission in Nigeria. Those were the main news headlines and now the news in detail. Welcome and thank you very much if you're just joining us. This is QTV News. The National Assembly ratified two loan agreements amounting to at least $1.8 billion on Tuesday for the widening of the Battle Harden Highway. Model Amin Choi reports. The National Assembly is jointly considering two loan agreements acquired by the executive on behalf of the taxpayers. One loan acquired from the Islamic Development Bank amounts to $14 million US dollars Another one from the Arab Bank for Economic Development amounts to 20 million US dollars. The Finance and Economic Affairs Minister, Mamburi Njai, tables motions for approval of the loan agreements by the National Assembly. The project is expected to reduce travel time by 46% from 48 minutes at the start of works to 26 minutes after the project completion. The widening of the Battle Harden Highway will also lead to improvements of the road quality, which in turn leads to savings and road maintenance. In reaction to the two motions, the NAM for SAMI moves a motion for the referral of the loan agreements to a committee, a move rejected in a vote by the majority of NAMs. Taking part in the debate to consider the agreement framework, most NAMs are in agreement with the reasons for the loans, which aim to ease the transportation challenges facing our country ahead of this year's OIC. NAMS also ask for clarification on the framework agreements of the loans and urge that quality roads be constructed to benefit the country. Here is the National Assembly member for Jokado, Salif Ujao. Support of this loan agreement, but all what I want to say is uh, this is a lot of money that the Gambians are going to pay in a number of years. So I just want to put it to the minister for them to have a very good monitoring system in the implementation of these projects so that these roads can be built in a very good manner so that it can last long. The National Assembly member for Lower Nyomi, Matar Jang, is among the few assembly members who take a different view and are critical of the loan agreements. Also, the NAM for Wooly West, Sidi Jata, takes issue with the Gambia's dependency on loans and grants and how it can affect the country's development. No, we can't. This, it is not possible. We cannot continue to take loans because they are killing us. They are making it impossible for us to move forward. No one will deny that here. For half a century, we have been living in this country as an independent sovereign nation. What do we have to show for it? Tell me. Economically, what do we have to show for it? Dependency. The Gambia is to pay both loans within 25 years, and more than 35% of each loan constitutes a grant. In a unanimous vote, the Assembly ratified the loan agreements. Preceding today's session in the chamber was a scene that saw today's business suffer an almost two-hour delay due to late attendance of the National Assembly members. Only a few NAMs and the minister are present on time in the chamber, but without a quorum for business scheduled for 10 a.m. The session could only begin 15 minutes to midday when a quorum was registered. This has become a daily conduct for some members of the 5th legislature that ironically recently sanctioned the justice minister for failing to attend a session. Mumud Lamin Choi, QTV News.
The EU Election Observer Mission to the Gambia on Tuesday presented its final report of the December 4th presidential election with recommendations for changes to the electoral, legal and constitutional framework. Loli M. Camera has more. The final report, which suggests 20 recommendations for the Gambian authorities' consideration, proposes essential changes to the electoral legal framework. Norbert Neuser, a former member of the European Parliament and the Observation Mission's chief observer, said the Observation Mission positively accessed the voting and counting process on Election Day. However, there are structural deficiencies, critical procedural and legal gaps requiring fundamental reform. Structural reforms is required, particularly in the creation of legal and gender divisions within the institution. Improvements in communication and transparency are recommended to facilitate better engagement with stakeholders. Importantly, the independence of the IEC is not protected under present constitutional arrangements. Legal reform is required to comply with regional and international standards. Norbert Neuser further stated that, though the Gambia has agreed to key international and regional standards, numerous gaps in this framework, coupled with limited accessibility to legal tax, creates uncertainty and reduced transparency. Norbert Neuser says the Independent Electoral Commission mandate is broad, while the capacity of the institution is very modest. The report highlighted that the presidential election took place in a competitive and vibrant campaign environment and was peaceful without any serious incidents of violence. Overall, the campaigning was issue-based, also highly personalized. personalized. <coughs> Throughout the country, campaigns met with voters extensively at large rallies in town down to small meetings at the village level. Women took an active part, although they were rarely in leadership positions. The EU election observation mission encourages bringing the legal framework, including the Constitution, the Criminal Code, the Information and Communication Act in line with the country's international and regional commitments to freedom of expression. The observation mission will hold discussions with the IEC, political parties, civil society groups and other stakeholders in the next few days. For QTV News, Lolly M. Kamara. Now, the Q Group Friday held its Family Phone Day at Q City on Independence Day. The annual event organized by the Q Group's social club under the leadership of Q Group chairman Mohamed Ja brought together staff of various Q Group companies and their families. Antumana Esonyasi has the details. This year's Family Phone Day has been hailed by the chairman of the Q Group of Companies as a unique moment of reflection and an opportunity to renew our commitment to national duty as the day coincided with the Gambia's 57th independence anniversary. Spearheaded by the social club, the Staff Family Phone Day presents an opportunity for staff of the various Q Group companies to meet, interact and have fun. The event was characterized by various sporting events designed to spur fun and socialization, especially amongst children of staff. Mohamed Jah, chairman of the Q Group, thanked families of staff for always being supportive, adding that the Q Group is not just a business establishment, but one big family that is here to serve the country. You know, really, we are a group where we recognize Ligi. You know, we are one of the biggest employers in the country, one of the biggest taxpayers. You know, we are one of the biggest taxpayers in You know, so we are one of the biggest taxpayers in the country. So, when we are not going to be able to do it, we are not going to be able to do it. We are going to be able to do it. We are going to be able to do it. We are working for the country. We did not organize this event just to have fun, but to create an avenue for our families to meet and get to know each other, because we are one family, and that is why we must all strive for the betterment of the Q Group and our country. Omar Let, Q Group HR consultant, who is one of the pioneers of the annual Star Family Fund Day, and Lamin Dabo, president of the Q Group Social Club, both express gratitude to the senior management and the organizing committee for making this year's event a memorable one. They also thanked families of staff for taking part in this year's event. 
we always care for our staff. We always care for our families. We know that the families are the ones behind the staff. That is why our staff are always happy and smiling. Uh, I want to thank uh, management. I want to thank um, all the staff. I want to thank uh, the Kimbrun executives. I want to give them a very, very big thank you for uh, making this event a success, a very big success this year. Um, they have all done extremely, extremely very well. We have worked around, worked around the clock to make sure that you know this event is coordinated very, very well. And um, I also want to thank uh, this opportunity to thank QCD. From swimming in the pool to enjoying ice cream, drinks and QCD's palatable dishes, children of staff also took part in several sporting activities. In the adult and company category, Natural Water Company won the male football final after defeating QCL by a goal to nil. However, QCL won the musical chairs and Ajibank scored first position in the spoon race, while QCD won the weightlifting. Following an impressive show of stamina and vigor, QTV won the tug of war against a strong Ajib team. Family fun day events such as this one improve the work-life balance and help establish more deep and true interpersonal relationships, making it beneficial for the company, employees and their families. Antoine Sonyasi for KTV News. Oh, what a beautiful story. It's always good to have fun after hard work. That will take us to a commercial break and when we return, still more news. Award winner for this category, GSM Taxpayer of the Year, goes to QCell Gambia Limited. QCell Limited. I feel very proud as a Gambian to be awarded this award. It shows the impact we are having on the economy of the Gambia. I must take this opportunity to thank the entire QCell staff for their hard work and also for all Gambians who patronize QCEL, I want to assure Gambians that whatever they give us, we'll give back to Gambians. That's why we have a slogan, Sunyubos. Accessibility. No fees. No textbooks are charged. They don't pay examination fees anymore. Do we have trained career developers? There used to be a lot of hidden costs. They should not ask them to pay for anything to register. And if it happens, they must let the ministry yeah, I mean, know. It, it, Where you have girls that are dropping out because of teenage pregnancy, girls dropping out because of early marriage, those are no longer issues. We would not know about homes that are broken. Uh, you know, kids with uh, disability. We're not leaving anyone behind. The qualified teachers for the English schools. We are training teachers, technical private schools. We didn't have the ability, the resources. Teachers were on a strike. The COVID allowance is not a welfare fund that you can give to anybody and everybody. The, the teachers, teachers were, were there. State of Affairs airing tonight at 9 p.m. on QTV. Welcome back and wherever you're watching us from, this is QTV News. Diplomacy, etiquette and protocol consulting on Monday wrapped up a week-long training course for protocol officers from the ECOWAS Commission in Nigeria on diplomatic protocol and etiquette. Alusise reports. These trained and certified protocol officers will return to the ECOWAS Commission in Abuja, Nigeria with new skills and knowledge to better serve the sub-regional commission after a quiet educational week-long training course in Banjul. The training was carried out by a Gambian-run diplomacy etiquette and protocol consulting. Protocol officers serve as the first port of call for visiting heads of state and at major events, hence their conduct should depict respect and welcoming. Speaking to QTV, former Gambia High Commissioner to Senegal, Ibrahim Usmandur, the CEO of Diplomacy Etiquette and Protocol Consulting, emphasized the importance of the training, adding that it is significant and crucial for protocol officers to undergo such training periodically to be on a par with the set international codes of conduct. Um, they're dealing with, uh, they're dealing with uh, people of diverse cultures, 
different nationalities, different languages, people coming from all over, from, from the 15 ECOWAS uh, member countries. They need to know how to comport themselves, how to carry out, their, execute their duties. If you don't know the rules, you cannot play the game. And diplomacy, etiquette and protocol are intertwined. And that's what we call, to a certain extent, soft diplomacy. Fondur, a seasoned diplomat and former protocol officer, the Gambia doesn't need to go far as his consulting firm has what it takes to provide such training for government and non-government officials and national assembly members at a much lower budget. He thanked the ECOWAS Commission for acknowledging his consulting firm and the participants for their cooperation to the success of the training. Addressing the trainees on integrity, Ami N. Ben Suda, managing partner of Ami Ben Suda & Co., highly respected Gambian legal luminary who did part of her studies at the University of Lagos in Nigeria, underscored the importance of integrity as a necessary and fundamental principle for success. The term integrity immediately conjures the image of a person of upright moral character, trustworthy, honest, and reliable. However, integrity as a principle has several dimensions. On behalf of the participants, Stephen Onwuka said the training has taught them to adhere to office protocol and best practice. He added that it also enhanced their skills and understanding of what goes on behind planning and organizing of official ceremonies and international conferences among others. It has been a very wonderful outing and we thank you for everything. Thank you, sir. On the sidelines of the training, these participants paid courtesy calls on the judiciary, the National Assembly and the National Human Rights Commission among others. Reporting for QTV News, I am Alou Sise. Following the construction of boreholes in Gunjur and sponsoring a ward at Sambuya Health Post by the Brikama Area Council, the beneficiaries have spoken about how the projects will affect their lives. Abiba Tusise reports. The projects are part of the Brikama Area Council's mandate to give back to taxpaying communities with development projects. The boreholes are constructed in Gunjur Misra to provide water to communities affected by water scarcity. Omar Jaju, the imam of the area, says the community has up to 150 compounds and has been affected by water scarcity for over five years. He added that the borehole is solar powered, providing easy access to water. Thank God we have four taps and all are functioning effectively. It has helped us in our religion because Islam and even humanity cannot go without cleanliness. We are happy and we thank and pray for the council. Momodu Chara Jiba, the councillor of Gunjur Ward, says the project is in response to the Brikama Area Council's strategic development plan to provide clean water, electricity and health care to the taxpayers. He further explains. The Brikama Area Council gave Gunjur Ward half a million dollars. As a ward committee, we asked the communities to request the money according to their needs. So, we prioritize water because of its importance and the demand. In promoting health in underprivileged communities and complementing government's effort in strengthening the health sector, the council is constructing an admission ward in Sambuya Health Post, which is three kilometers from Gunjur Highway. Idris Aturi, the Alcalo of Sambuya, says the village has over 4,000 people and the health post is important. The Sambuya Health Post was built in 2014 without an admission ward. If we have patients, they are either admitted in the maternity ward or referred to other health centers. This admission ward is important because it will allow people to be admitted and will increase the number of staff. Staff will finance Salafano. Fabura Majambang, the officer in charge of the Sambuya Health Post, explains some of the challenges at the health facility. Um, the area council has supported us to build admission ward for both male and female, which is a very good move for us. 
Because at the moment, as the Alcalo has mentioned, if I have admission, I have to refer you. Maybe antenatals. Well, for those ones, I can observe them in my labor ward for the meantime. If things are fine, then I can continue my treatment. But if I see that things are coming different, then I have to send you to have more, um, uh, better treatment. Maybe you have to go to another health facility. Fato Tabali, a native of Sambuya, has this to say. If we have a health facility with an admission ward, it will be very easy for us. We are happy and we pray and thank Allah and hope for the successful completion of the admission ward. The admission ward is expected to be completed next month. It will contain at least 10 beds for both the male and female wards. For QTV News, 